Good afternoon. It is uh, the 28th of December, I think, and it's a very nice sunny day, but it's kind of cold outside. It's um, kind of a little past mid-afternoon right now, and it's uh, about 30 degrees outside, 29, 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And what I want to show you is, now you see in the greenhouse here, and it's cooling down now, but it's about 75 degrees. Now, what's the importance of that? The importance of that is that with a nice, bright, sunshiny day, with no assistance, and it's 30 degrees outside, uh, it, it gets up to 75 degrees in here, or something like that. Now, if you had the idea that if you built a greenhouse, that on a warm day, or a sunny day, let's say, in the winter time, you can take the heat out of the greenhouse, the excess heat, and store it in something like an earth bag or, or an earth uh, battery or something like that. You know, that's just not going to work, and I'll tell you why. Because you see that temperature? Well, if you have different temperatures, well, maybe it could work in your situation. But in my situation, it's not. Because 75 degrees at the high temperature during the day here because it's so cold outside, I don't have any temperature to lose unless I want to get in the middle of the daytime down to 50 degrees or something like that. And the reason that would happen is because if I had some kind of a heat exchanger, uh, whether it's an earth battery or I was heating water with a radiator or something like that, and I was taking excess, what I thought was excess heat out of here, and storing it somewhere else, what would happen is the temperature in here would have to go down during the middle of the day. That's just the way life is. So you really don't have excess heat in most greenhouse situations in the middle of the winter, even if it is a sunny day and it gets nice and warm in the greenhouse, you don't have excess heat to spare that would cause you to cool the greenhouse down even more before the night time comes when it gets really cold and there's no sunshine. So it's really not practical in most cases to try and extract heat from a greenhouse in the winter time on a sunny day if you live somewhere where it is cold outside, like I've got right here, 29 degrees, it's not that cold, but if you've got it where it's even colder than that, you don't have a lot of heat to spare to remove from the greenhouse during the daytime. So you've got to do something else. Well, here it is, later on in the evening, the same day, it's about uh, 8 or 9 o'clock right now, I don't know exactly what time it is. But the sun's been down for since about 5 o'clock, 5.30, something like that. I guess 5 o'clock it's gone down, and then the shadows still happen. But it's dark now, and it's about 8.30, something like that. And you can see our temperature has gone down in here to about, well, it looks like it's at 43 degrees or something like that. Now I've got two heaters running right now. The reason I'm out here is I want to show you something. You know how this afternoon it was 75 degrees in here for a while, and uh, maybe it got up to 80. I don't know. But my point is this: this afternoon it was uh, 75 degrees in here at least for several hours. So the ground shouldn't that be warm? And if you look at it, all these things here, that says 32 degrees, so it's probably about 42. The bricks down there, 36, they're 46 degrees. And some of these tomato leaves, they say 32, it's probably 40 degrees. It's about 40 degrees in here. But now, the point being is if you could store heat in the ground, wouldn't, because it was so warm here today, wouldn't the ground be a lot warmer than, than the ambient around here? Wouldn't it be uh, you know, sending heat up? Well, it kind of does for a while, but not that much, because uh, the ground will dissipate heat right off the surface quite readily. But 
there is heat underneath that is still coming up, and that's why you have things like frost lines. But the, the earth is generating heat, and it is coming up. But the transfer rate to the dirt is so slow that uh, the top can be quite cold, while underneath two or three feet, it can still be 45 degrees, something like that. And even though it's that warm under there, it takes a long time to, for that to traverse through the dirt. Now, what that kind of means is that uh, if you put heat into the ground, and you know, with it, like you're going to use an earth battery, and if you put it in deep enough, like four feet or five feet or whatever, and you heated the ground up underneath there, in the first place, you've got to have a place to get the heat from. And like I was telling you earlier today, unless your greenhouse is heating up to 90 degrees without cooling it, you don't have any extra heat to put down in the ground. But if you do have the 90 degree issues, then yeah, you can do that. And then that'll uh, warm that ground up and it'll kind of stay there for a while, but it will dissipate. So the point being is that if you think you're going to put uh, heat into the ground right under your greenhouse and store it there for you know, a week or <laughs> two weeks or something like that, it ain't going to happen because the heat will dissipate. The heat transfer rate of dirt, you know, it does transfer from warm, I mean from cold, uh, sorry, from warm to cold. Heat moves from warm to cold. It just does in any substance and how fast it moves depends upon the, the characteristics of the medium. Now, you know, water it transfers through quite readily. Uh, and, and iron, you know, steel, uh, copper pipes, and things like that. Heat moves through those things quite readily. The dirt has the same thing, but it's much less, and the transfer ratio is much slower. When there's snow outside, the snow doesn't melt from the bottom up, does it? And that's because the ground, it, so the heat transfer rate through the ground up to the surface is slow enough that it can also dissipate right through the snow and not melt any of the snow. In other words, if they heat the surface of the ground, it will never get warm enough to melt any snow, not by itself. So there's theory, and then there's practical. The practical thing I'm showing you here, this is what happens. So if you heat a greenhouse like this, and again, it's right now it's 15 degrees outside. And it's, uh, like I said, 41, 42 in here right now. And this heat that I'm adding will keep it from freezing in here. It'll keep it about 40 degrees. It won't get much colder than this. But you're not getting any help from the ground. What you're getting from the ground is the ground is at 25 degrees, and that helps a lot. But uh, the ground is about the same temperature as the as the surroundings. And again, you know, it works the other way. I'm trying to keep this greenhouse from getting too cold. Well, the ground doesn't uh, transfer heat fast enough to absorb any of the heat that I'm putting in here. It's a 40 degrees, it's going to stay 40. Now some of it will penetrate into the ground, you know, and dissipate a little bit, but it won't do it fast enough to make any difference in how warm it is in here because of these heaters. Well, a little extra note over here. I thought I'd run over here to show you the fish pond. Now this fish pond, I don't know if you can see it. Let me put a flash up. The water is circulating. It's circulating through those uh, uh, tanks over there, and it's circulating through these tanks over here. Now, I just showed you it was 41 degrees in here, but look at the temperature of the water. That says, well, you probably can't see it, but it says 51.3. Now, that, this tank is, this pond is four feet deep, and this water is circulating out here in this uh, uh, area, and... Uh, it's 41 degrees or thereabouts in here right now, but yet that water circulating up here and down there on that pit pond 
it is still 51 degrees and I think all it got today was maybe 52 degrees or something like that it didn't get very hot but what what, what that shows you is the tremendous amount of heat storage that water has this is tremendous now keep in mind that the uh, the ground temperature underneath here again like I said is four feet deep the, the ground temperature underneath here where that water is contacting the ground through that little uh, uh, rubber li uh, rubber liner that's in there it's about 40 degrees 41 degrees so why doesn't that make that temperature down there jump down real fast it's because the heat transfer rate through the dirt is so slow it'll warm up the dirt you know the layer of the dirt right around it and then the transfer rate is so slow that it'll take a long time to penetrate out so the dirt in this regard is acting somewhat like insulation anyway thought you might be interested in seeing that that this is staying at 50 degrees the water is but everything else in here has cooled down from about 75 degrees to about 41 or 42 in just a matter of hours but the water has cooled from about 51 or 2 degrees to 51 degrees in the same environment interesting isn't it Well, it got down to 15 degrees last night. It's uh, morning here, about 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's about uh, 20, I guess about 20 degrees outside. And as you can see, it's about, oh, about 66 in here right now. And uh, let me show you the water temperature. I think that'll be interesting. I guess uh, the quick thing right here is that everything here is about same temperature as that temperature, except for the water. Let me show you this. Now if we go over here to the pond, this is kind of an important thing. Is look at that, it's 48.7. So all through the night, you know, with it getting down to 41 degrees in here, that only dropped to 48 degrees. What was it when we showed it to you? 51 or something like that? So it went down about two degrees, and that was all. And that shows you the huge amount of thermal mass that the water has.